So needless to say, Matt Gates' political career is in a little bit of jeopardy, given that he is uh, facing some legal trouble. And that's a bit of an oversimplification. But let's just say that he's such a despicable individual that one of his own family members, his fiancee's sister, actually decided to come out and confirm that he is indeed the creep that we all suspected he was even before his current scandal, Gatesgate, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so she basically took to TikTok to expose Matt Gates, and she shared her own experience with Matt Gates' creepiness. And, you know, this is not necessarily going to uh, inform us about the direction that his investigation will go, but it just gives you a little bit more insight and, and probably... You know, uh, it makes the claims against Matt Gate that much more believable. And before I even show you her videos, he's already having a terrible week because he had his uh, press event with Marjorie Taylor Greene disrupted by a whistler. And on top of that, last week, I didn't talk about this on the program, but he was ambushed by a TikTok star and troll famous for trolling Republicans. And by now, I'm sure that you've seen it, but let's watch it again because it's hilarious. Oh, oh my God, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I mean, this, oh, everyone thinks you're crazy. I don't think you're crazy. People think you're a pedophile. I don't think you're a pedophile at all. I don't think he's a pedophile at all. The charges against him are totally false. They're totally false. Oh my God. I love Walter Masterson. He is a master troll. Love it. Um, so that happened. And now Matt Gates is having to deal with one of his own future family members exposing him. There is so much more to the story and about like what I know about Matt Gates, And so I just wanted to like come on here and kind of clarify some things because it is definitely a serious situation. Now realize that I use the incorrect terminology. It is not pedophilia, it is ephibophilia, which is being attracted to like post pubescent teens in the age range of 15 to 19. Last summer when I was living in DC and interning there, Matt had just started dating my sister and a friend that I had met and kind of knew that was around Matt's age, um, like had a kid, had been divorced, and this guy kept telling me like, oh, Matt told me I should ask you out, like that we'd be great together, yada yada. So I decided to confront Matt about it. So come Thanksgiving, when I finally had the chance to see him face to face, I was straight up with him and I was like, what is up with this? And he just immediately got so defensive, started yelling at me and my mom. He called me a narcissist, was just a thousand percent gaslighting me. He went full lawyer on me, like, I don't have to listen to you. I don't have to answer your questions. When everything came out about him, I honestly, unfortunately, was not surprised. And it wasn't just this encounter I had with Matt when I was in DC. I heard kind of through the grapevine stuff about him. You know, everything is hearsay, but just he had a reputation for prowling after college girls when he's a grown man. And to me, that's just kind of weird. If I can just bring some attention to it, so people are aware of what is going on and people can be held accountable, that's my goal. And as someone who has personally experienced ton of creepy old politician men hitting on me when I was underage and experiencing sexual assault at that age by people of power, it's just very disheartening and I have zero tolerance for people like him. And I think politicians need to be held accountable for their actions and I'm tired of them getting away with this type of stuff. And I think it's important that we are just aware and hold people accountable to whatever extent we can. So Roger Solenberger of the Daily Beast reports, Representative Matt Gates' future sister-in-law appears to have had more than enough of the Florida congressman posting three TikTok videos in the last two days, slamming him as weird and creepy and a literal pedophile. Roxanne Lucky, the sister of Gates' fiance, Ginger Lucky, was sharply critical of the congressman and his treatment of young women, saying she unfortunately was not surprised to have learned Gates was under federal investigation for alleged sex crimes. In one video, Monday night, Roxanne Lucky told a story about Gates pressuring an older man to court her when she was 19. She called the move weird and creepy and claims Gates yelled at her and her mother and went full lawyer when she confronted him. After the videos were posted, Ginger Lucky hit back at her sister, telling the Daily Beast she had a history of, quote, destructive behavior. Reached for comment Monday evening, Ginger Lucky claimed she and Roxanne were estranged. A video posted by Roxanne Lucky suggests... 
She was close with her sister and Gates as recently as November. Matt and I are enjoying our engagement and are deeply in love. My estranged sister is mentally unwell, Jinder Lucky said in a text message. She has been in therapy for years and our family hopes that after receiving inpatient mental health treatment, she will overcome the tendency she has repeatedly shown to engage in destructive behavior. Now, there's a couple of caveats here to this story. The Daily Beast hasn't been able to contact Matt Gates's fiance's sister. Um, and this is obviously he said, she said, they had a falling out. And to me, I find that sad. It's probably over Matt Gates. But as someone who is an outsider with no knowledge, but I do have a political bias against Matt Gates because not only do I think he is a creep, but his politics are absolutely disgusting and fascistic. Um, I think that the sister here is throwing his fiance is throwing her sister under a bus to protect her possible criminal fiance. It's kind of sad. Like when I see her say my estranged sister is mentally unwell, that looks like gaslighting. Like, it, like she is trying to convince everyone that her sister's actually mentally unwell. When we all heard her speak, like she seems more articulate and more normal than any time I've ever heard Matt Gates speak. So if anyone is mentally unwell here, not that that's a pejorative, but if anyone isn't necessarily uh, credible for whatever reason, it's going to be Matt Gates. Like you could do a juxtaposition side by side of both of them. And just if I knew no knowledge uh, or had no knowledge of Matt Gates or, uh, his fiance sister, I would think, yeah, that dude is probably the crazy person just based on the way that he speaks. I mean, this individual basically uh, asked for American citizens to be extrajudicially murdered during the Black Lives Matter protests. On top of that, he claimed that Antifa was responsible for the January 6th insurrection. This individual is a fascist and probably a sociopath. So if anyone in this situation is mentally unwell, it's Matt Gates. Her sister seems perfectly reasonable, but to me, um, with my limited knowledge of their internal family dynamics, it seems like she's taking her fiance's side over her sister's side. Then that's that's pretty sad. I mean, if it is true that Matt Gates recommended an older man ask her out when she was nineteen, you know, you you would hope that your big sister, I'd assume, would defend you and think, yeah, that's 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 pretty creepy. You really shouldn't do that. I mean, it, are you not able to question Matt Gates in this re relationship? I, I just, I don't understand that, right? It's not like her sister is alleging anything illegal here. It isn't illegal for Matt Gates to recommend that his older colleague ask out his uh, his girlfriend's uh, sister, who's 19. It's, it's deeply creepy, of course, but she's not accusing him of a crime. I mean, she did say that he's a literal pedophile, um, based on the allegations. So, of course, you know, she definitely, she has it out for Matt Gates. Um, I think that's obvious, but it seems like maybe that's based on him kind of driving a wedge between her and her sister. But, I mean, either way, if anyone here has, you know, a credibility crisis, it doesn't seem like the sister is the one who has the credibility crisis. It's, it's Matt Gates. So, she's not saying, like, he murdered a baby. She's saying he tried to hook me up with a creepy guy or she tried to encourage a creepy guy who's much older than me to, to ask me out and hit on me. And I didn't like that. It made me feel uncomfortable. There's nothing wrong with her saying this. In fact, I think now, given the scandal that he's in, it's important for people to know this. It takes a lot of courage to speak out against your own family. So look, uh, we don't know what's going on. We don't have all the details, but does it look like she's engaging in destructive behavior? I mean, sure, if you're publicly speaking out against someone who's going to be your brother-in-law, but still, if it's Matt Gates, mm, I'm going to have to be a little bit destructive as well. I wouldn't want that douchebag in my family. He's a ghoul. He's a fascist. And I'm sorry, he, he looks like a creep. He acts like a creep. So yeah, I, I don't blame her. I feel bad for her, for uh, the sister here in this instance, because she seems really distraught that her sister is marrying someone who is a sociopath.